Hey you, and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this old video, uh, we are going to the year 2016, when, in a, in a place called Spalding, UK, uh, shortly after midnight, a lovely young couple, they were, uh, they were in the, the girl's mother's house, and they were just chilling out, watching, you know, the, the universally beloved movie Twilight. Everyone's favorite and then you know after they watched that and it was getting late and this is in April So it's still kind of dark. They they slowly drifted off to sleep that very young couple those two people They would remain inside that house for the next two days as a smell grew and grew eventually the police themselves would call over and they would uncover a scene worse than any they ever imagined. And when they asked, when they asked the boy what was going on, he said to them, why don't you go and look? Before we get into it, please subscribe to see a new crime video every week. And now, how about we do what that teenage boy just said? Let's go and look. Let's give it a go. The town of Spalding, it's in eastern uh, England, and it's quite a picturesque little town. About 36,000 people live there, it's got a real low crime rate, and it's a great place to raise a family. Among, you know, the, the moors. Is that what they have? Canals they do, and these nice little gardens, markets, and shops. It's a place of agriculture, a place where seasonal workers would come and go. It's great, it's my new favorite place. Now let's move on, because as I said, it's, it's a great place to raise a family. And two families did. A, you had the Edwards, and B, you had the Markhams. They tried. Anyway, how good a job they did is, uh, it's up for debate. Let's meet them, come on. Elizabeth Edwards, she went by Liz, 49 years old in 2016. She was originally from Edinburgh, Scotland, and she was the mother of three girls. Mary, 27 years old, Kim, 14 years old, and Kate, 13 years old. She worked as a lunch lady in the local primary school, uh, St. Paul's. She was known, you know, by, by the kids and by their parents alike in the town. She also, uh, she, she volunteered in the theatre, she volunteered in the charity store, she worked with the children's church choir, she was a happy little face going around town. And Katie, her youngest daughter, would be a frequent figure by her side. It wasn't always so happy and easy though, um... Liz had been married before to a guy named Peter Edwards. He was the father of uh, Kim and Katie, and he was a tough guy who took, he took, you know, talk to the hand a little too liberally. He was a welder and he was a tough guy. Not in the, you know, smoke cigarette pops collar kind of way. No, uh, domestic violence was pretty much a constant in the Edwards household. Court records would later describe Peter Edwards as an abusive drug addict, um, and the family fell out in 2004. Liz, she took her, her three daughters and she moved from refuge to refuge to women's shelter, and eventually, after some time and months trying to escape Peter, she landed in, in the town of Spalding. And now, you know, it was herself, it was her three daughters, Mary, her oldest was kind of growing up, she was doing her own thing, so it was Liz. Kim and Katie, Kim and Katie in school, Liz working in a school, you know, and they were in this, this nice little little town, things seemed great, they thought. In 2008, when middle child Kim was six years old, um, I'm guessing some of that domestic abuse rubbed off on Liz because after an argument about a TV, the television, Liz punched six-year-old Kim. It was Liz herself recognizing, you know, what was going on, uh, obviously having been married to a guy who was doing it for so long. She was the one who called social services, and Kim and Katie, they went to, they went to foster care for a couple of months. Um, but when, when her two daughters came back, it's not like things were any better. Kim would speak with, with a caseworker often, saying how she felt her mother didn't, didn't love her like she loved her sisters. Mary and Katie. How she was lonely, how she felt abandoned. 
She said once that Liz tried to strangle her, but, but Liz denied uh, that ever happening. But Kim grew to be very, very depressed. Um, she felt alone. She felt like she was in a pit. She felt like she had no one to talk to. Her teacher even referred Kim, it's her teacher seeing it herself, even referred Kim to a mental health service where on the concern level, she was a two out of 10. She should have been 11 out of 10. But it was in that dark pit that Kim found a light. She found, you know, she found her, her way out. She found her savior. And that ways out it was named Lucas Markham. You'll see why she was into him. What's that like Shakespeare, star cross lovers? I should know that study. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's that, but in English lessons in school. It was in September 2013 in Spalding Academy. Now, that's not the school Liz was a lunch lady at, but there wasn't too far away. And that is where Kim Edwards and Lucas Markham crossed paths. Their gaze met when he was hurling a chair across the room. As you do, like. She found this outburst of violence to be totally badass. But they didn't uh, quite hit it off just then. It seems that she had a crush on him for, for a while, and then they properly started to get to know each other while queuing up outside class in 2015. They started talking, you know, getting to know each other, texting, and then a couple of months later, they were, they were an item. They were 13, 14 years old, you know, school romance, you've, you've heard this story before. And Kim seemed happier than she ever had been. She had friends, she was popular, funny, happy-go-lucky, you know, they'd go shopping together, do all the things that teenage girls do when they're like 13, 14 years old. I don't know. Lucas, now, let me talk a little bit about him because he wasn't cut from the same cloth. Uh, on the outside, at least, because we'll get to that in a second. But, but you know, while Kim was always described as happy-go-lucky and a joker and funny and lovely and blah, blah, Lucas was described as a bully and a loner. I mean, he threw chairs, though, so... They didn't seem to match on the surface, but um, as I've gone through Kim's kind of family history, well, Lucas had a lot in common when you get to his. He too had been around plenty of violence growing up. His mother, she died of leukemia when he was four years old. His dad was a heavy drinker who wasn't shy with his hands. Sounds familiar. Lucas moved from foster home to foster home, eventually moving in with his aunt, his aunt who lived in Spalding. Now though, Kim and Lucas were like, they were like infatuated, you know, in like the, the cringe UA kids are commenting on Facebook, always, you know, talking to each other, lots of XXXs, you know, in, in the messages, all that sort of thing. And although they didn't seem to match, they seemed happy. So right oh, you know, whatever floats, floats your boat. Once again, we're talking on the surface here. But one person who was not too happy at all was Liz. She did not like Lucas in the slightest, like at all. Liz was worried uh, that Kim's grades were slipping, that Lucas was controlling, he was possessive, so I guess, so I guess Liz did care, to be honest with you, in the end. But maybe Liz, she saw things in Lucas that she had, you know, previously been, been exposed to with Peter. She was not happy they were together, and she wanted to break them up. And Kim's friends, although they were happy that she was happy, uh, they had their own concerns when Kim would show up from time to time with black eyes and stuff like that. And, and Lucas could send some pretty horrific messages to Kim, calling her like every name under the sun. But Kim, she would stick by him. In 2016, the pair ran away together. They got on their bikes, they got their little tent, clothes, food, and off they went. There was a massive search for him. The police arrived. Everyone was freaking out as they were just two kids. The police eventually found them and Liz put the foot down. Kim was grounded and no more Lucas. I mean, come on, what's the first thing you think of when you hear that? That's just going to bring them closer together. These are teenage idiots. And so it was three, four months after that, after their little runaway escapade in spring, March 2016, that the shit hit the fan. In March of that year, Lucas was suspended from school. 
His behavior, always, you know, reckless, was, was out of control. He ended up being sent to, like, a special school unit for extremely disruptive students. Kim, on the other hand, you know, she always seemed happy on the surface when she would go and speak with her, with her social carers and her psychologist. She said she was more depressed than ever, and she'd even tried, um, she'd even overdosed, taken a load of pills, and then had to be taken to the hospital. So things were were not too great, and then they would bubble up uh, a month later in April 2016. Peter Edwards, right, Kim's father, the abusive drug addict, uh, he had come back into the Edwards' lives. He said he wanted to reconnect with Kim and Katie. And Liz, you know, who had run away from him, was not having that at all. She was putting the foot down. And so this then led to a huge argument between Liz and Kim, because Kim wanted to see her dad, uh, which probably was not the best idea, but hey, it's her dad, right? So Liz and Kim, they said some very not nice things to each other, and Kim fled to Lucas's house. She ran into Lucas. They barricaded themselves inside Lucas's bedroom. They had to be physically separated. And then that evening, after they both left and went off, they, they would each return to their respective houses, Markham's house. Edward's house and they would find both their bedrooms had been stripped by their families, leaving only a bed. Coming back to their own bedrooms with all of their possessions thrown away. It's a pretty clear message from both Luke's family and Kim's family. <sighs> they were 14 years old though, like. But still, at 14 years old, that was when, that was the, you know, straw that broke the camel's hump or whatever you'd say, because it was after that they started making plans. Disturbing, very disturbing plans. For almost a week, Kim and Lucas would meet every night and go to the local McDonald's. And while they were chomping down on Happy Meals, literally they were getting Happy Meals, they were plotting murder. It would be Liz, it would be Katie, then themselves. That was the plan. After discussing it for, for some time, the date they landed on for, you know, go, 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 was Wednesday. It was the 13th of April. The Edwards lived in a semi-detached home on Dawson Avenue, on a, on a little cul-de-sac. And it was on the 15th of April that both Kim and Lucas got a fright. They got a fright when there were multiple knocks on the front door of that house on Dawson Avenue. Because by this time, by the 15th of April, the house had been very, very quiet. It had just been Lucas, Kim, and the TV. See, the police were calling because neither Liz, nor Kim, nor Katie had shown up to school, either for work or for study. And Liz, um, she'd actually been dating. Liz had met a new man, a guy, a trucker named Graham. He lived over a town away, and he, you know, he hadn't heard from Liz, texts, calls, they all went unanswered to that house on Dawson Avenue. So the police were called, you know, to do a welfare check. The police actually called on the 14th of April. They called around three different times, to no answer. They called again then on the morning of the 15th of April. Knocked, no answer. But this time, the difference was the police, they heard a dog inside so they were like all right they busted in the door they wanted to make sure you know that, that the edwards girls they were all a-okay they were anything but there was no miscommunication misunderstanding they left town without telling anybody which is what they were hoping for they were way off the police busted in the door they went first into the living room and they opened the door, and what they saw in the living room was a mattress on the ground, the TV was on, and on the mattress was both Lucas and Kim with like a duvet on them. The police, they looked and said, what's go you know, what's going on? What's up? And Lucas, he looked the cops dead in the eye, and he said, why don't you go and look? They did. They went up the stairs, and on the landing, they noticed the smell just getting stronger and stronger. They opened the door into the master bedroom, 
And on the bed in that dark room was the body of Liz Edwards. She was completely covered, soaked in blood with a pillow over her face. She had been stabbed eight times, her jugular violently slashed open. Then in the next room, they found 13-year-old Katie. Same, covered in blood, pillow over the head. She had been stabbed twice. Also in the bedroom was a kitchen knife, covered in blood. Police were called to the scene. All of them. Kim and Lucas were taken into custody. What happened was this. Late on the night of the 13th of April, uh, while Liz and Katie were, were fast asleep, Lucas, he walked up, uh, up an alleyway behind the Edwards house. He climbed over the fence and then he climbed onto the one-story extension. He knocked three times on the upstairs bathroom window. That was the signal. Uh, for Kim to let him in. Let him in, she did. He got in and on his back, he had a rucksack. Inside that rucksack were four kitchen knives. That's two each for the two victims. The plan had been for Lucas to kill Liz and then for Kim to kill her sister Katie. Lucas, he went in, he crept into Liz's darkened bedroom while she was fast asleep. He knelt beside her and he aimed straight at her neck. Um, the plan was to stab her in the voice box so she couldn't scream. He missed. There was a huge struggle. He was stabbing her, stabbing her, stabbing her. While she was struggling, she was found with knife wounds all over her arms. Eventually, he put a pillow over her head to stop her screaming. And then she was gone. Um, she was laying on her side. Um, stabbed her through the neck, I think like through that way because she was on the side. I went into the room to see what was going on because I heard like noises and stuff. So I just wanted to check if he was okay. Um, he w was on top of her um, with a pillow over her head. I thought I heard her say get off me but I'm not entirely sure. After about 10 minutes of Lucas putting his weight on her, she was dead. Like. He came out of the bedroom, he was covered in blood, and he said, Well, Kim, you're up. Kim, she couldn't do it, she had a panic attack. She went into the bathroom, she lay on the ground in a fetal position, while Lucas went into Katie's bedroom. And, well. I went into... Her mum's room stabbed her in the neck where she was asleep on her side and smothered her face with the pillow. And uh, after I knew she would go, like, I went into Katie's room, which is the same room as Kim's, and um, I, I thought I stabbed her, but <clears throat> I thought I stabbed her, but I'm not sure if it was like her or the mattress. Why? What was the reason for killing Kate? Because she had called the police. Okay. Is that the only reason? Pretty much. Afterwards, they closed over the doors to those two bedrooms. They went and they had a bath together to wash off all the blood. Then they took a mattress downstairs into the living room. They had sex. They watched the Twilight movies. They drank alcohol that was in the kitchen. They ate ice cream and tea cakes, and they basically stayed there for the next 36 hours until the police busted in the door. The whole time, Katie and Liz were upstairs. What exactly happened to cause you to want to, to plan this? Because it's quite a drastic thing to to happen. You clearly, from what you're saying, had your reasons. I mean, what were those reasons? I've never gone with my mum. Um, uh, I knew that she favoured my sister more than me. Even though she said that she didn't, I knew that she was lying. And how did you feel? I was okay with the fact that it happened so quickly. It gave me peace of mind. It wasn't like torture or anything. And how do you feel about it on reflection now? The same way. To a point, yes. Yes, because my mum doesn't have to deal with me anymore. 
being suicidal and she doesn't have to wake up worrying every morning to see if I'm still alive. My sister doesn't have to go through all the heartbreak and all the emotions and stuff. They abandoned the committing suicide part of the plan pretty quickly. As you can tell, they didn't want to go to step three and four. They saw what they had done to Liz and to Katie, and they didn't want to partake for themselves. Lucas would plead guilty to murder, Kim to manslaughter, that mental illness had diminished her responsibility. They are the youngest couple ever convicted of murder in Britain. They were both ordered to serve a minimum of 17 and a half years. So we'll be there for quite a while. Kim would say after that the murders were a relief. She was glad that now her mother and her younger sister, you know, did not worry about her anymore. Um, I'm not sure if, if you know, other people would take the, the same view as that. It's a scary attitude we see in teen, you know, or child killers, you know, the attitude they take. I mean, if this is what they could do now, what could they do later? Were they failed by their families, by people who should have looked after them, by, you know, social care and all that sort of stuff? I mean, kids, kids are stupid. Kids are real dumb. But I mean, stupid is, is crossing, running across the road without looking. Stupid isn't brutally murdering people without having an ounce of regret. They Lucas and Kim never showed one iota of actually feeling bad about what they had done. So, I mean, the question I have for you is, like, do you think that if someone is that young and does something that horrific, that there is any way back from that for them? I mean, they're young and presumably they have a long life ahead. Can you ever go and become a normal person after that again? I guess we will see in, uh, I mean, at least 10 years when they'll be out. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I really appreciate you. you doing so and being here with me in my new Henley. Um, really, thank you. It means a lot. Um, here, listen, please go check out the Patreon where you can find early access to videos, exclusive videos. There's a Patreon only Discord. Or please go check out uh, the merch down below where you can find some hoodies, mugs, stickers, t-shirts, all of that chapter stuff and some kooky designs. And um, as always, just really, thank you so much um, for watching. And uh, hey, don't forget to please take care of each other and yourselves. Because I love you. Mike out.